I remember my first time in the seminary, I really was wondering, what, what will this be like? What will the seminarians be like? Will I be accepted? Will this be a place where I'm going to flourish? All my fears were swept aside when I started studying with other people who had a similar call. And coming to this seminary, I reflected on the six great years I had while I was studying for the priesthood. These are going to be the future ordained leaders of our parish communities. So human formation, spiritual formation, pastoral formation, academic formation, they're all critical to provide the best ordained leaders we can provide for our church in the future. This campaign helps those who are preparing for the priesthood, helps those who are recently ordained, as some of them come with great debt from their prior educational world, and helps those who so faithfully walked with us and have served us, have served you. This campaign also helps our parishes, which have been challenged by the impact of the global pandemic by providing financial resources for pressing local needs. Eleven years ago, the family's journey began bringing our son Patrick to the seminary as he discerned becoming a priest. As a parent, we wanted the best for Patrick, who's now a priest in the Cleveland Diocese. With the relationships I developed over the years with faculty and staff members, we often talked about how we can make this great place better. The buildings of our seminary are over 70 years old. They have one pump on campus that supplies heat. There's no air conditioning. One plug, imagine having one plug in your room for your alarm clock, computer, for music. Our seminary is long overdue to be updated. For these men, the seminary is their home. And I look at the fact that I lived there for nine years, that was home for me. The physical space needs to inspire men to say this is a place of formation and it's an investment that I see that the seminary is making in me and they're taking my formation seriously. And it's saying we value you enough to make sure that the environment in which you're being formed helps with your education, helps with your spirituality, and helps with your humanity. The living area of our seminary will be updated, creating a room that is soundproof, creating a space that is 40% larger for our college seminary and 60% larger for our theologians. We're also looking to add a lounge area that will allow them to socialize together, watch TV. There will also be places for group study and prayer. Besides the living space, we need to renovate Resurrection Chapel. This will be a place where many of them will find the clarity of their vocation. This will be the place where many of them will continue to find courage to serve as a diocesan or religious priest. The people of this diocese have supported our seminary in its many transitions. We look forward to this renovation project because this is our hope for the future. This will allow this structure to continue to serve the diocese, hopefully for 70 years and beyond. I think we absolutely have a responsibility to our priests. They lay down their lives for us. They're there every moment of our lives for us. They're there throughout the good times. And they're there not just to give us the sacraments, but to share in that celebration for us. They're part of it. They're like family. And they're there when the bad times come too. All the tough decisions and helping us with that burden and sharing that loss with us. If we have older people in our own families that retire, we step up to help them because they're family. Our priests are family too. They've always been there for us, and now we need to be there for them. Most graduates can reasonably expect to go into a good paying job after they leave college, and they can reasonably expect that they're gonna get promotions and pay raises on a regular basis. None of that is true for the seminarians. And I think the average debt for most seminarians is over $40,000. On a priest's salary, that's going to be very tough to pay off. When I entered seminary out of high school, uh, I went into Borromeo, and at Borromeo we're educated at John Carroll. And also, too, just part of that is there's a cost 
I was able to get scholarships, but there was still some sense that I had to pick up loans and I was responsible for paying them back. We're not seeing as many people in church as we would like to, and certainly the pandemic has been the, the cause of that. And there are some areas in the diocese that are really, really hurting to kind of keep the revenues up. And the other element of the campaign, and probably the beauty of it is that it is designed to bring money back to the parishes to help through these difficult days, and hopefully shore up some things that have been lost through these last several months. After going through my years of formation here, I can appreciate what this building has done, and they've been so instrumental in my own formation. But then going out to the people of God, being with the people of God, being a shepherd for them, being a, a man that they can call father, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. We're very fortunate that we have our seminaries right here in this diocese, and we train our young men to become priests and to then serve us in our diocese. These men, in each of their own way, radiate the heart of a shepherd. What does that mean? To be compassionate like Jesus Christ, to be welcoming, to be forgiving, to offer God's love abundantly to everyone they meet. By giving to the Heart of a Shepherd Capital Campaign, you are helping our seminarians today. But more than that, you're helping all those who will be ordained in the future. You're also helping our parishes where these men will serve as leaders. You're providing a future for our church, our parishes for decades to come.